So in this video, we're going to keep it very, very basic. I went all out. I spared no expense. I bought this $20 jig and it came with a back saw, but I didn't like the back saw. So I used my own. I ended up using my own back saw. This was one that I had from a previous miter box. It's an old Stanley. Uh, I like this one because it's got a good solid back on it and the, the set is really good. And it's not a very wide splay on the teeth, so I get a really good narrow curve cut. Almost as narrow as my uh, imitation Japanese pull saw. And uh, incidentally, either one of those saws work great on this little jig. I did use a hacksaw to open this up because it was very, very narrow. And anyway, I have it marked. And you'll see those marks 30 and 45 degrees. I used a 30 degree jig or a 30 degree cut on this jig. And I drilled a couple of holes so I can screw that directly to my bench to keep it stable so I don't have to, to hold it uh, by hand. I also, we're also going to use a spring clip. And then if you've seen my other videos on pen segmenting, like in the first video, I made a a drill press jig and uh, we're going to use that again so we're going to use the drill press jig and you can see what that looks like and uh, I use this thing probably more than I thought I would so anyway um, the first thing, you'll see a couple of images of it and then we're going to go right into making it and then the second pen um, it's going to be all acrylic, so we're going to use pretty much the same steps, except this one's going to be a kitless fountain pen. So the only thing we're using on it that's off the shelf is just the nib. All right, so back, relax, and watch the video. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, to make this pen, we're going to use a couple of different materials here. We're going to use a stabilized uh, maple. This is a uh, burl maple. We've got some blood wood. Uh, this is another piece of maple from the blank. That's the off cut. Some blood wood and some regular curly maple. And um, before we do that, before we can put it all together, we're going to use some veneer sheets. We're going to use, this is a white or bird's eye maple. Uh, it's been bleached white. And then we have dyed black veneer. So we need to cut this into strips. I'm, used, I'm using this piece of hardboard uh, perforated edge on the back side. That's going to be used to hold this down in place while I cut it. This is uh, a little over 12 inches one inch wide and uh, this works out perfectly to hold to hold this in place as that is being cut i'm going to use several strips of this so it's going to pretty much use the one whole sheet of that to do that so we'll go ahead and cut that real quick You can use segmenting sheets or other materials, whatever it is you're accustomed to using. I like using veneers. You know what, I'll just keep that one right there for the other part. And then I'll probably just need a couple of pieces of black, probably three for the middle. OK. 
Okay, now that these are cut, now I'm just going to use one of these uh, pieces here, which is a little more than uh, probably five inches long. Let's see here. Oh, five and a half inches roughly. A good size for a blank. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to mark that roughly. And then I'm going to cut all these, mark them and cut them to the same length as this real quick off camera. Okay, these are all marked. I'm just using a standard pair of scissors to trim those. And then there's little end pieces, a little more than an inch on each side. I'm going to save those pieces and then use those for other bits of segmenting. If you've watched my other segmenting videos, you'll know what those come in for. So to add the uh, center segments, I'm just going to use this right here. I don't want to cut it lengthwise. I want to cut it sideways because of the bending properties of it. So I'm just going to roughly cut these about an inch. I need at least eight of these. Okay, now that we have our lower veneers cut, let's get the body glued up. Now, in previous pens that I made, I've always done, uh, alternated the colors between white, black, and white. And then I put a centerpiece. Now, I'm going to do this like, a, like one I made before that I gave out as a gift. I'm doing white, black, white, and then I'm doing a double row of uh, blood wood in the middle. And then, so that's two, two pieces of blood wood right there so far. White, black, white, white, black, white, and then I need white, black, white again. So you can see we're going through quite a bit of veneer, just like that. And then I want to make sure that I've got a, a label here on this on this uh, piece of uh, outside blank. So I want to make sure that lines up so that the grain is correct on this. I want to slap this down. I've got wax paper down here because I'm just, we're going to glue this up after the fact. And if you've seen my other videos, you probably, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, um, to clamp this, I'm using some some spring clamps at first to hold this in place because that's kind of wide and then I'm going to get some regular clamps and put on that and close that together so let me get some regular clamps now okay I switched from those small binder clamps clamps to these two inch spring clamps that I picked up at the local home center these work really good also you don't have to mess around with the clamps. I'm switching over to uh, CA Thin. If you haven't seen this before, this is how I do it. I'm just going to saturate that middle area with the thin. Let it soak in. And then spray it with the accelerator. Make sure that gets in there, fills all those cracks. Then I'm going to use the accelerator, the activator here for the adhesive. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to take these off. Here's the reason for the wax paper. So now I'm flipping this over. I don't know if you can see it's a little bit uh, buffled over here, so I, I want to clamp the other side down now. Usually it doesn't do that. Usually it stays pretty good. Let me get that in the middle. Okay, so put a liberal amount of adhesive in there again. Make sure that gets in both sides. And all through the middle. I'm not going to worry about any adhesive getting on that glue or on the rubber because that's just going to pop right off. Once you hear that and you can see a little bit of steam rising on that, you know that's pretty much good to go. So there is the basic body of our blank. Now we're going to go to the mini bandsaw and cut all this stuff off the sides. Okay, here we are at the bandsaw now. I'm just going to take this and just cut this right off on the blade here. And on the back side, you can see where it's got some bubbles on there. I'm just going to take and run that right through the blade because you can see uh, on an angle um, how uh, high that is against the surface. So and then we're just going to rip those off and then we'll take it to the disander. Okay, at the disc sander now, we're just going to go ahead and just smooth that out a bit. Okay, at the drill press, we're going to be using a two inch hole saw with my hole saw jig in place, clamped. And if you've seen uh, my first segmenting video that shows you how, how I made this in, in detail. So anyway, um, first things first, let's line this hole up using um, my little high tech tool here. And I want to be just a little bit short of that middle, the way that lines up right there. So that looks pretty good. Right there, I'm happy with that. So we'll go ahead and make that cut. I didn't lock it in place yet. Okay, and I've got these pieces of Paduke. You can see how when I cut them, I labeled them. 
I have them from Bloodwood and Purple Heart and so forth. So we'll go ahead and knock this wedge out of the way. So, and, and also on the back side or the heel of this blank, I have an X so that I know that when I put it in one direction, I won't be uh, getting or putting it in the next time the wrong way. So as long as I look for the X on the outside, we'll be okay. Okay, at the table saw now, you can see that I even that up with a little bit of a drum sander. Now I need a couple of veneers. Now if I use a straight veneer in here, that's not really going to bend without breaking that veneer right there. So I can't do that. So that other veneer that I had cut crossways, now because it's crossways, the, the grain is going to allow that to bend nicely. So I need two of these. Two of these for every um, for every cut. So I'm just going to put those in there. One of these pieces of paduk. And that's going to go in here like that. So let's center that up. Now it may look a little short for on the outside, but it's the inside that counts. So when we turn that down, that's going to line up nicely on the inside. So we'll put some more thin CA here. Let that soak in for just a second. A couple of drops. And you're going to go through a lot of thin CA. There's probably other adhesives out there that are better, but I'm only familiar with CA glue. So if you have something better that you like, you can use that. But I like CA because it's all I know, basically. So I'm just going to give it just a little bit more. Normally I would go to the bandsaw and trim that or trim that off but I'm just going to go right to the to the disc sander and sand that flesh real quick okay so that's been sanded flush so we're just going to go right back to the drill press cut the other side okay we got the first cut now we're going to do the second cut that's already lined up so we don't have to do anything with that we got the X on the back side. Let's put the wedge in there in place. Hammer it in, make sure it's tight. Turn it on and cut. Back that out. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, do the exact same thing over here on this side now. Just like before, I'm going to go two pieces of veneer. Do a piece of paduk again. Let's squeeze that in place. Add some accelerator. Flip it around.
Okay, now that I have the second part done, now we need to go and divide it up the middle. Now I used my little center divider here uh, thing alignment tool that I got from Rockler. And you can see I've got a, a pencil line right there already, one on each side. And if you haven't got one of these things, these things come in pretty handy. You just put on there like that, rub it back and forth, and there's your pencil line. So I would recommend getting one of these. Okay, so now we're going to line that up onto that line. Again, push that forward and make sure the X is on the back position. Now the wedge, push it a little bit more forward. Hammer that in place. Again, let's pull out that high-tech tool, that little mini straight edge. And you can see I'm about a good eighth of an inch off. So I would need to be a little bit too much. And that looks pretty good right about there. So we'll go ahead. And I did vacuum this out. Uh, it's a good idea after one or two cuts to clean that up uh, just so that you don't have anything getting in the way of this right here. So it's a good, solid, secure, 90-degree angle cut. We got a little light cut on that just to double-check that alignment. And I'm a little bit off, so I want to just go over just a hair. That's better. Back that out. See how that looks on the inside? That's really starting to take shape. You can see how those two first two cuts line up right on the middle of that black veneer. So then these two will end up the same way. Now we'll just go back and glue this up again. Okay, let's assemble this next one again, just like the first two. Two pieces of veneer, to double stack those. And line those up into the middle of that. Now both these veneers are roughly just a little bit less than the, than the uh, thickness of that kerf of that hole saw. Oops, slipped on me a little bit. When you try doing that with glue in place, it's going to set up on you a lot. Uh, it's going to actually will set up on you before you get a chance to, to get everything aligned. So that's the reason I do this first. Trial and error. So, and that's why you wear gloves. These things are great because the glue just comes right off of all that stuff. Or these, actually, they don't stick with the rubber. So we'll just sand that flush and then go back to the drill press, make that last cut. Okay, so we have one, two, and three cut so now we're going to do our fourth cut make sure we line this side up on the inside but you know again we got the X on the back so we can see that that the correct side is all the way forward tap that in place I vacuumed all that off again so that way this could be nice and clear and flat so that we get a nice good cut on that
that's a nice straight cut. See what that looks like from the off cut. And then we'll just glue that last piece in. It'll be just like what we saw earlier. Okay, same thing. Two there, two veneers, and one more piece of Paduke. Get them lined up right. That looks good. We'll go ahead and put some adhesive on it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Sand that off real quick. Be right back. Okay, this looks pretty good all the way around. And then next thing we need to do is we need to do the chevrons on top. If you've never done chevrons, this is an idea of what it's like. It's just three layers. If you look at it like this, Okay, it's only three layers of wood or more, depending on what you want to do. It's a 30 degree angle. And to get an idea from the other side, after you have this part glued on the crown, this is trimmed off here, and then that would be trimmed off here. So we'll go ahead and layer the, uh, the blank that we're going to need to make the chevrons first. So to start out, I'm using a piece of uh, figured maple. This is just a, a curly maple. And I want to use the same woods. I want to use the off cut of this uh, burl maple same this from, from the same blank. So, And I also want to use a piece of bloodwood to emulate that from the middle, just like, just like in here. So I'm just going to stack it the same way. Put the put the bloodwood in the middle and then the burl on the outside and the maple on the other side. Okay, like this. So I want to put I'm going to use veneers in between each layer. Oops. Just I'm just going to use white and then on this one to help separate the white from the white. I'm going to use a piece of black as a de defining color between the white and the black. So we're just going to clamp these together. So we'll go ahead and lay those, lay those together like that. And you know what? I'm going to add this one afterwards. I'm just going to clamp it from here first. Okay, so to clamp these, I'm just going to use these small ones this time around. Make sure those are, are down. You can see how those line up right there like what you see in there. Let's soak for a second. Flip these around.
And you can see how that CA thin bleeds through the wood. So you know it's getting really good penetration. Okay, now I'm just going to put a piece of a uh, scrap piece of wood on the outside. Okay, so now to glue this piece here, we're going to have to go old school with a little bit of Elmer's glue. And then I want to put a blank up against that. like so, and then I'll clamp that in place with the spring clamps. Then we'll let that dry for let that dry for about an hour for that piece of veneer to, to adhere real well. And then we'll sand that off. So in this part of the video, we're going to cut the blank down to length first before we do anything. And I have it marked. I have it marked. This is the center here. And this is the very end of the upper. This is the lower. And you can see I've got a little bit of a mark right there. So, and I just like using this small aluminum miter box that I bought at Rockler. This was like 20 bucks. You can get them at Lowe's or Home Depot. And then let me just put a clamp on that. was I had to use a hacksaw blade to follow the line here because this blade was about twice as thick as the original blade so that I can get this blade in here. So I just followed it through with the hacksaw. It made my life a lot easier from the original blade. So we'll go ahead and cut that middle piece down. And I'm going to leave a little bit, maybe just a hair extra on there so I can trim it after the fact, but I'm pretty much right in the center, right there. There we go, I like that. Okay. And then I'm going to trim that end. I'm just going to go just a little bit above it. Not very much. Wood stabilizes very hard. I should lubricate that, but anyway, okay, so this is the lower, this is the upper. Now I, I need uh, 30 degree angles. So this is the angle here I'm going to use. So let's go back to our guide, and this is how this works like this. So you can see that's pretty much the exact same thing. So I need to cut an angle that's going to flow like this. So I'm going to turn this around. Oops. 
actually I need that to be this way first. So So we're just going to follow this same angle cut, this same angle cut as we're going to use, and we're going to need enough to do half of this length. So we're going to mark that on the back side. Uh, we'll just hold it and scratch it from underneath. So I'm going to need four of these. So the easiest way to do that is so now I'm gonna oops so it's gonna be roughly like that and if I go a little over or under it's not a big deal because this is really wide so let me uh Clamp that there. So on the opposite end, you've seen this before in my other videos. Uh, I have a little notch cut out right here. That's for any buildup of sawdust. So I know where that's going to be. I'm just going to clamp this in place. Okay, I have this set here, getting ready to cut this at a 30 degree angle from here to here. And I readjusted it a little bit off camera. I adjusted it half the distance from here to here or in the middle, just by lining that up from the edge. And that's where I put my stop block. So I'll know that all my cuts will be exactly the same. I need four of these. So we'll just go ahead and make this cut. We'll just save that for later. So we need four of these. And then these are going to actually be glued together like that. Okay, so I need this right here. It's going to go on there. So now I need to cut this down to fit this. So first thing we need to do is glue this together so we can uh, flatten the, this top part and then we can mark this for the um, for the length to cut. Okay these pieces are dry now. I just use the binder clip. I just dry fit them together just like I did on the actual blank itself. I put a couple drops of CA glue in the middle, let the glue seep down, put on both sides, and then uh, let that cure. I didn't add any accelerator to it because it already had accelerator when I laminated it together. So that was actually enough residue that was there to actually uh, cure that. Not immediately, but it took about 10 minutes or so for it to dry. So anyway, those are both done. I sanded the face off on the disc sander to save some time. That way I could get some uh, pencil marks. And I just took a small uh, ruler, lined it up fl flush against that corner 
the corner here and the outside edge drew a straight line across and then you can see that's going to be my mark here now to save time I did on the disc sander I did this one and uh, exact same process I left a little bit of a gap in between a little bit I'm going to leave a little bit more on the other one this is going to be for the top and this one will be for the bottom since the lower is actually a little bit longer I'm going to leave more maple on the bottom so it could, it'll exaggerate the length anyway um, so now what we'll do is since this is the upper here and this is the upper basically uh, I'm just going to align the center line here I don't know if you can see that there it is and then align that with the line in the veneer the black line and then just eyeball it on the other side make sure that's straight take my pencil mark like so and then you see I did that on both sides so now all I have to do is just cut a 30 degree angle right here and then let me see I'm going to put my stop block back on the other side because I don't need to change the length but I'm going to reverse the stop block and put it on the back side not the front side get the clamp see or this uh, spring clamp there to help lock that in place and you still got a good view and again I'm just gonna cut that down now I could use my table saw jig but I don't have a, uh, a setup for 30 degrees, so I have it set up for 60 and for 45. So being that I like to do things simply, uh, this is actually pretty good. This works good for me. see that that's a pretty straight on cut right there doesn't get any better than that so we'll test that out fits just like it was made for it may not be perfect on the sides now if you want to adjust the fit a little bit it's actually right on alignment on the in the on the on this side that side Wow, it's just a hair off, so I'm just going to touch that up on the sander, and then I'm just going to put a, a clamp on it, a quick grip, and squeeze it front to back, and some CA, and we'll call that one good, and then we're going to do this one here the exact same way. Okay, okay, these are the blanks. Now, these I just glued these on. And then to save time, I sanded these down on the sides so that way these are in even space all the way around. I didn't want to have to add any uh, one eighth inch slices of wood. Figure since I'm turning that down anyway, if I sand it down on the sides, it's still going to look good. <clears throat> I'm going to end up turning it off anyway. So, anyhow, normally when I make these, I normally line these up on this side over here this side this way I wanted to try a little bit differently I wanted this to to point this way and then have this this the, the scalps point down the other direction on the other side just to see how that looks I've never tried it that way so this should be uh, something entirely different 
but very similar to the, one of the ones that I just made just recently. So anyway, um, we'll just go ahead and drill these out and tube these up. And I like using the mini lathe to drill these out. So we'll go there next. At the lathe, my tube for the uh, upper, according to my drill press, my drill guide is a 31 64th. So that's the drill bit that I have here is a 31 64th. And this is the upper. So I'm going to, I used to use the drill press for, for drilling these things out, but I like the, uh, if you've seen in my other videos, segmenting videos, I only use the lathe for drilling out because uh, if these are even all the way around, I get the best drill that way. And because I, it's got pressure on all sides, uh, I won't have any blowout either, so it's a lot safer and uh, quicker. Let's just put some safety glasses on and start to drill. I'm doing this at a slow speed. Very shallow, in and out. Look at Sure you clear that cut, clear that blade. There we go. And of course, if you have a longer quill stroke, you can do that in one or two passes and see that's right on the center, both sides. So this is the other side, the, lo the, uh, the lower. It looks like that is a 13, 30 seconds. Again, I start from the, from the middle and drill outward. Just my preference. Feel it break through nice and easy. So there we go, nice clink, perfectly centered. So we'll just tube those up with some uh, glue. Okay, so I got my tubes here. These are sanded down for both of these. And as I said earlier, I'm just going to glue them. I'm just using basic cheap old Elmer's glue all. <coughs> Excuse me. Elmer's glue all. And I'm going to use a good, probably a quarter penny's worth of it. Use very liberally. And I like using this versus CA or epoxy. Epoxy I liked using, but it was a bit expensive after a while. So, like I've said before in my other videos, this gets in there to all the group, gets in there, fills all the gaps. I've never had an issue with it failing, so... Readily available, it's inexpensive.
there. We'll just let those cure for about an hour or two before we turn. Now that the tubes are all dried after being glued up, now we're just going to trim those off. So in the lathe, same process as before, using a barrel trimmer. the bevel on top so you get a nice flush cut. Doesn't take nothing really. I think they were three pack, three different sizes. Really inexpensive. Just mount that up and turn it next. Okay, now we're ready to start turning. And um, get that in place. So we get the blank all lined up. This is the upper, this is the lower. And um, anyway, we'll go ahead and start. So 
حصل ان انا dry so I'm just gonna turn that back down to shape
CA finish with three coats of thin and two coats of medium CA. Use the vacuum on to take away the fumes. Medium CA in the activator. Okay, so at the drill press, I have all the pieces I need for my kit. Everything is all conveniently put into this little pie plate. I'm using my drill press to assemble 
You've probably seen this in my other videos. It's just a small piece of scrap wood I had to insert in my Jacobs chuck. It turns my drill press into an arbor press with using that handle. It's great action, it works nice and smooth. Been doing that way for years. So we'll go ahead and we'll get started on the middle. Since this is the middle, this is the upper, this is the center. So we'll go ahead and insert this piece first. And then this is the upper part for the clip. You know, I've seen some people, they put the clips sideways. I usually put it in the middle right here, but I'm not exactly sure. I think I'm going to put it in the middle on the opposite side just to highlight the center scallop because it's reversed. That way I'm not taken away from any of the scalloping going on there. So I'll go ahead and clamp that. Line that piece up. Down. It's almost like it moved a little bit, but that looks good. Okay. And before I connect this piece here to this piece, I want to make sure I screw this in first. I'm going to lower this table down a little more. I want to line up the pieces, these pieces front to back so that I know that I'm completely in alignment when I push that together. So when I unscrew it, I know when I screw it back in, I'm 100% lined up. Go that a little bit more. So that's the front and back, so when you take it apart, you know, when you screw it back together, the water's going to be lined up in the middle. If you want some of the lower portion, so I like using a block here, I can just stand that block up without having to readjust the table. Place. Have a spring in the spring Okay, that looks really good. That's our completed junior gentleman. Flip it around. Let's see how good that looks. Put that back on. We're all going to line it up. 